Hello, how are you doing? I've been enjoying reading through the long list for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction. I've read 10 out of the 16 novels so far. And today I'm here with Joyce Carol Oates to talk about this year's shortlist. Now, I don't actually know what the shortlist is yet. Uh, the Women's Prize kindly sent me the list in advance. But I've not looked at it yet because I thought it would be more fun to discover it on camera and give my instant reaction to the shortlist. So in order to do that, uh, instead of looking at the list myself, um, I had my husband uh, look at the list and copy down each of the six titles that are on the list onto these colorful envelopes. Uh, so I'm going to go through one by one and discover what's actually on the shortlist before going through each title and talking about them individually, um, giving short summaries of them and any thoughts or feelings I have about these books, if I've read them or not, because I know some people only start reading book prize lists once the shortlist comes out, because 16 books is quite a lot of books to, to get through. The winner will be announced on June 14th, so we do have quite a while to um, read uh, some of these six novels, uh, or maybe we'll have read some of them already. I, I don't know, but um, I'm looking forward after this video to sitting down and getting stuck into a new book because I just finished reading quite a long novel this morning so now I have time to uh, read more and uh, I just I baked um, some rhubarb walnut muffins um, this morning so I'm gonna enjoy a rhubarb walnut muffin while <laughs> settling down with a new book because uh, you know I'm just domestic like that I just like to bake so I'm really excited to find out what is actually on the shortlist uh, obviously I'm not gonna post this video until after the official shortlist announcement announcement has been made, um, but I trust me, I've not looked at what is on the shortlist yet. Now, just to remind you, because um, last week I made uh, a predictions video of what I'm hoping to see on the shortlist. So these are the six novels I'm hoping to see there. Um, obviously, I've been a big fan of Demon Copperhead, um, which I've been rooting for uh, even before the long list was announced when I made uh, my predictions video with my friend Anna James. Um, so yeah, if, if that is not on the shortlist, I don't know what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm gonna, but I'll, I'll be really sad. <laughs> and, uh, and those other novels on the, uh, that I'm predicting, I think are all really excellent. So hoping to see them there, but, uh, but yeah, okay, going to get in and find out what is actually on the shortlist. I'm going to shuffle these because um, I don't want to uh, read them in any particular order. Uh, so first off, we have... Uh, uh, Oh, Black Butterflies. Okay. Yeah, that is one that I've not read yet. Um, but when I made my shortlist predictions, a lot of people commented saying that this is one of their favorite books from the, the list so far. So I'm really looking forward to, to reading this. Um, it sounds like a really interesting story. So yes, that, that, is, that is good. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah, excited to, to read the, the rest of the books that I've not so far from the, the long list. So, um, so I'm glad to still have one to, to get to. You, but there may be more. So next is Pod by Laylene Paul. Okay, I've heard such conflicting opinions about this. And uh, I, I know some people really love it and some people really did not. So this will be a really interesting one to discuss. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this, this made it. Wow, okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit worried now that because, you know, this is how it goes with prize lists. You never know which way the judges are going to go. So my taste might be very different from, but, but I've not read Pod yet, so maybe I'll read it and love it. So I'm going to discover that one as well. Next up is, yay, Trespasses by Louise Kennedy, uh, this wonderful debut novel. Uh, I read this over the, the winter break. I, I thought it was it was so powerful, uh, oh, such an amazing story. So that is one, at least, from my predictions so far that has actually made the short list. So that is good. Next up, uh, The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. Yay. Uh, yeah, another, another book that I read over the winter break. Um, it's so excellent. Such a wonderfully immersive historical novel. So that is really great to see. Yay. Okay, next. 
Fire Rocher by Jacqueline Crooks. Uh, one of uh, the books I read from the long list um, that was just a wonderful discovery that I don't think I would have read um, if it hadn't been for the, the prize. And yeah, such a, uh, such a great novel. Another one I predicted um, from to be on the short list. So yeah, I've, uh, I've three out of six so far. Okay, <laughs> oh my gosh, Demon Copperhead might not be on there. It might not be on there. It might not be on there. I have to... I have to brace myself for this. Um, oh, oh what, what if it hasn't made it? This is so tense. Oh, Joyce, oh, what are we going to do? Okay, okay, breathe. All right. Yay! <laughs> Demon Copperhead. Oh, phew. That is such a relief. Oh, my gosh. I, 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 I can't believe this was the last one, too, that I randomly picked from this list that that because uh, it's the one I've been hoping for the most yay yay ah oh, such an amazing novel I'm I'm so happy I'm so happy this is on the, the short list that's that's amazing hooray okay now I'm gonna take a minute uh, breathe and uh, get myself together and talk about <laughs> my feelings about the short list as a whole so here we have it the six novels oh people are gonna be talking about this uh, it honestly yeah you never know which way book prize judges are gonna go um so yeah there's a, a couple of surprises on here for me and at least in terms of what i was predicting um but four out of the six that i was hoping to see listed are here i'm so really happy about that and yeah i'm so i'm so interested to see what i make of pod uh this is about the life of a dolphin named ea um, which instantly i'm connecting to because my initials are eric anderson um so she um has a problem with her hearing and uh and so leaves her pod at one point and uh so makes her way out in the ocean and I've heard there's there's lots of uh, kind of sexiness in the sea in, in this novel um, which uh, it sounds quite creative but but also I think Leila and Paul is quite an interesting writer since I, I read and really enjoyed her novel the the bees um, which completely takes you out of the psychology of a human and what the psychology might be like of an animal or like an insect in the bees but in this in, in an animal um, how the feelings about like love and community and family might differ in this kind of animal kingdom and you know as a way of like taking us out of our human experience but of course a lot of people you know this kind of story isn't going to be for everyone um, who just won't want to get into the mindset of a dolphin like that uh, but but it is it sounds I think it sounds like a really creative and fun thing so I'm I'm really interested to see what I make of it uh, now this novel trespasses by Louise Kennedy um, so there are three debut novels um, on the on the short list um, which is really great to see because there's a lot of debut novels uh, on the long list so yeah a good mixture of uh, kind of like seasoned authors and newer authors and Louise Kennedy um, is such a promising young writer. Um, so she um, she uh, was also shortlisted for the new Waterstones Prize for debut fiction um, last year. And this novel following the life of a young woman who is a teacher in Northern Ireland and during the, the 80s, during the Troubles and, uh, and her experiences having an affair with a, a man who's on sort of the other side of the troubles but who is also like fighting for the rights of everyone because he's a lawyer um, and uh, her experiences with her her family and her community and with the school children that she teaches and seeing how those children's lives are impacted by these larger political events um, it's so powerful and meaningful um, I, I think there's such great descriptive qualities in in this book that um, that really make you feel her experience but also this ongoing tension that is always just there in the background um, it's such a powerful novel um, I might reread this um, before the the winner is announced because yeah I read it a few months ago and and I, I feel like yeah if I 
go back to it again. I might get even more from it. Another debut novel on the list, Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris, uh, which uh, is also um, uh, about larger political conflicts set, set in Sarajevo um, during the early 90s, um, during the Bosnian War and the siege of Sarajevo, and uh, following a, a woman who um, is worried about the, um, the, the building tension uh, in the, the country and and uh, so sends her elderly mother to, to England alongside her husband um, to stay safe. And she thinks that the, the conflict will end soon. But as we know, um, looking back on history, it doesn't end soon um, and it gets much worse. So we um, follow her experiences and those of her friends um, during this, this larger conflict. And this is a time period and an area of the world and a conflict that I do want to read a lot more about. So I'm really looking forward to reading and discovering this. Um, I've heard there's a really great like poetic quality um, to the writing as, as well. And like I said, uh, this book has had a lot of fans and a lot of supporters. I think another book from the, the long list that probably not many people have heard of before the list was announced, but now um, that now it's getting a lot more attention, which is really great to see. And then uh, the last debut novel on the, the short list, Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks. Um, another story that's also um, uh, about political conflict and, and about identity as it follows the life of a young black woman in the late 70s and early 80s, um, beginning in London um, then, uh, and then ultimately ending up in Jamaica and, um, and looking for her roots and also trying to escape this conflict that she finds herself in um, between two factions of, um, of, of the tensions in British society and, uh, and how she evokes her, her voice and um, the, the power of the message of this book, um, I think is so strong um, that I was just really struck by this story, even though I had some qualms with some elements of the, the plot. Um, yeah, I think overall the, the voice of it is so powerful and meaningful. And uh, yeah, I was really touched by this story. And finally, we probably had the, the most well-known authors from uh, the, the long list and two authors that have won the prize before, Maggie O'Farrell and Barbara Kinsolver. So Maggie O'Farrell's uh, The Marriage Portrait, um, like I said, is such a wonderfully immersive historical novel taking you to the 1500s in Italy and a woman uh, from a very privileged family um, but who has been kind of slighted and by her family and just seen as more an inconvenience and they marry her off um, but she finds herself in this very dangerous situation um, so this is based on real historical event um, but Maggie O'Farrell brings it to life um, it's like it's she does this wonderful thing and um, that historical novelists, the best historical novelists do, where they take like this nugget of information from history, this really interesting situation in fact, which we don't know too much information about and where, the, where there's a kind of mystery surrounding it. And she fictionally you know, fills out the rest of this story to recreate this figure from history, this period from history, and um, to bring it to life and offer an alternative solution to what we know from the history books and how she does that um, in such a creative and vivid way um, and uh, with a, a character that's so compelling and sympathetic in a lot of ways. Um, she has a lot of artistic abilities. She's kind of the outsider of her family that's just been kind of watching on and how she tries to navigate um, this, this very perilous situation that she's put in with her new husband um, who's very powerful and uh, but also very domineering and uh, and dangerous and so yeah I, I, I really enjoyed this novel I, I hope more people do too and then we have Demon Copperhead hooray oh, I feel I feel like so chuffed and proud that you know I was rooting from this before the list was even announced and here it is on the short list and it may well win this year's prize. I hope it does. I hope it does. Uh, and uh, but maybe I'll feel differently, you know, after I read the other two novels from the shortlist that I haven't got to yet. But anyway, such an incredible story. Now I have to make a little confession. I've never actually read David Copperfield's, which Barbara Kinsolver 
took her inspiration from this Dickens story and like closely paralleled the life of her character based upon David Copperfield. I meant to read that novel before reading this one, but then I got impatient and, and I just wanted to read this. And so now, yeah, maybe I will go and read Dickens, one of Dickens' most famous novels before going back and seeing how this correlates with this story, because I've actually heard from a number of readers that because it so closely follows David Copperfield, they feel like the plot was, they, they couldn't be as emotionally invested in the plot because she kind of recreates it somewhat in this story. But I don't really see how that could be because it is such a contemporary novel um, about modern day America and the opioid crisis and, and about um, impoverished families and about racism. Um, it's so firmly rooted in contemporary American society. So, you know, even if some events and some characters may roughly parallel with Dickens story. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see like how how that could put how, how that could spoil the story because um, because it, it is it is so fresh and new. Um, but yeah, I've not read the Dickens yet. So um, I, I'd love to hear in the comments below um, if you have any thoughts or feelings about that. And like I said, my friend Anna James has gone and read the Dickens before getting to Barbara Kinsarvola's novel. So hopefully at some point we'll have a discussion um, either just about Dickens, you know, versus King Solver and how they relate to each other. Um, or definitely, you know, we'll have a conversation about the shortlist before the winner is announced um, in June. But I, I just loved this novel and story and the voice of this character so much. I, I felt he was so real and relatable, but he's, but he's also like a character that has some conflicts and flaws to him. Um, so he felt very well-rounded like that. And like I said, the way it evokes um, this, this sense of modern day America and individuals who uh, have been kind of slighted and left by the wayside um, and left to, to perish and how Demon Copperfield survives um, through his wit and intelligence and creativity and, um, and yeah, the way she builds his character um, I, I thought was so powerful and, and I just grew to, to love him over the course of this story so that is why I'm rooting have been rooting for this novel so much and think it's such um, an incredible piece of fiction. Now I am quite sad that uh, none of these three books uh, made the, the short list because I, I thought they were all really strong. Uh, I, I've loved Glory ever since I read it last summer and Wandering Souls was another really great discovery um, from this long list and, and The Bandit Queens, um, both really great, uh, both really strong debut novels um, that I'd highly recommend reading if you've not read them yet. And also from the, the long list that didn't make the shortlist. I'm so surprised I'm a fan didn't make the, the shortlist as well because it's had so much prize attention, so many fans of I'm a fan. <laughs> and uh, and uh, But also Children of Paradise. Um, I, there, there have been a few people that have been really strongly rooting for this book. And uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading these two books um, from the long list because I hadn't had a chance to get to them yet. But now that I've discovered the shortlist and now that we all know the shortlist, I would love Love to discuss it with all of you. Um, so let's have a chat in the, the comments below. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books from the, the shortlist or if you're looking forward to reading any of these books or which book you are rooting for to win this year's prize. I mean, I really get some people that say uh, it, it would be greater if the prize was won by a debut author, which I totally agree with and can really sympathize with. Uh, but at the same time, I just loved Demon Copperfield. So Copperhead, Oh, I get confused with the name all the time. It's really easy, isn't it? Yeah, I would really love to, to see that win. And it would be really exciting because Barbara Kinsolver would be the first author to have won the Women's Prize twice. Um, so that would be quite an event as well. Or if Maggie O'Farrell won, she would be the first author to win twice as well. But we'll see. Like I said, we never know which way the judges are going to go, how they are thinking about all of this. It'll be really interesting to see. But like I always say with book prizes as well, it's, I don't, it doesn't matter so much to me who wins. I mean, I'll get behind and root for a particular book to win um, just because it's 
fun to, to join in the competition that way. But it's not about the competition for me. It's about discovering great new books and great new fiction um, that I might not have read otherwise or that I have read and that I'm really happy to see get more attention and more people reading it and discussing it. And so for me, it's all about the discussion and the discovery. And like I said, I'm so happy to have discovered Fire Rush through this prize. I'm such an incredible novel. I would really recommend other people read. And I'm looking forward to reading the other two books on the short list. Oh, what should what should I start with? Should I start with should I start with Pod? Should I start with Pod? Yeah, why don't I start with Pod? So I'm going to settle down, start reading Pod with a muffin and find about the life of dolphins. So um, thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well and reading good things and eating sweet things. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye bye.